Who won the debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris? This went down. It all happened. This is the first time they faced off against each other. Uh, they they shook hands at the beginning of the debate, which was interesting. Very sweet. I, I wasn't sure if they'd ever met before. Mm. So, so I wonder if that was their first time meeting in person. Okay. There was a stark contrast in presentations. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. I'm going to call it the way I see it. If you guys know anything about me, you know that I, I politically speaking, I'm I'm very conservative. I'm as pro life as you can get. Mm -hmm. I'm as pro two A as you can get. I'm pro small government. I'm right. Like you name the issue, mm -hmm. I'm anti Marxist, anti socialist, anti big government, anti big taxes. But at the same time, there's also being realistic about what's happening. Yeah. Okay. And it's also being uh, just 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 having just scales and, and and calling it the way you see it. Not about policy, because this isn't about policy. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about today is not about policy. This is about theater. This is about who prepared better. Yeah. This is about who uh, was able to drive the conversation, set traps for the other person, and allowed them, yeah, to take debate. Because everyone's gonna claim, I got the better economy. No, I got the better economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But who did it better? Yes. Yes. And so uh, I watched the debate. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I've said this for a while that though I agree with Trump more on policy issues, I think both of these candidates, in my opinion, is a, a manifestation of the, the judgment of God <laughs> on America <laughs> that we got these two. There was amazing folks like DeSantis that ran in the, Demo in the, excuse me, in the Republican primary. And uh, yeah, yeah. So where, where should we start with, with, our, with our analysis? Well, we're going to start from the jump. Uh, Breaking Points put together a nice compilation of three highlights, and we're going to react to those bits because, you know, they, they found they did the dirty work. It was probably about 45 minutes, uh, their, their debate, so maybe a longer, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so they put together some, some key points. We're going to jump in um, and kind of give our thoughts on these points. Yeah. Now, no, 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 I, I will acknowledge the the parts that were false because there's a lot of false stuff being said mm. so we will acknowledge those but we're also going to be looking at this on a very superficial level of how does this look to the average person to the general public and i will say this i don't know if this sways the election i don't know if this sways the election okay so let's jump into this this is the first clip again shout out to uh Breaking points for putting this together. This was very interesting. Go ahead. I'll tell you something. He's going to talk about immigration a lot tonight, even when it's not the subject that is being raised. And I'm going to actually do something really unusual. And I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies because it's a really interesting thing to watch. You will see during the course of his rallies, he talks about fictional characters like Hannibal Lecter. He will talk about windmills cause cancer. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. You will not hear him talk about your needs, your dreams, and your need, and your desires. All right. So what's, what what happened in that moment, Zach? All right. So this is the thing that she did kind of amazing. And this is what a lot, a lot of people were commenting, too. One, she was setting traps. But not only was she setting traps, even at the beginning of the debate, she said, what you're going to see tonight. And she set the frame. She sets the frame. She sets the frame. Even if it weren't to happen, she already set the frame of what you're going to see tonight is lies and name calling and uh, someone that only cares about themselves and not you. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the, the debate. And so we saw a little bit of it there, too. What you're going to see, he's going to keep going back to immigration, mm -hmm. even if it's not the topic. Mm -hmm. She sets the frame. She kind of pulls the M&M. &M, mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to name everything that's going to happen before it happens. Mm -hmm. And then even if it wasn't even fully happening, or when it did happen, she, she could point it out, and then it validates what she's saying at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So she from the very jump, she owned the entire debate. Mm -hmm. Ugh, which... Is yucky to say. Yeah, and and just the the side by side screen comparison mm -hmm. of the faces she's making, yeah, yeah of exactly. Trump, Trump's faces, of her at times just looking over and laughing at him. Yeah, you know. Now she's to me unbearable. Oh, she's insufferable. I can't. <laughs> and it's really hard. But I'm not talking about me and yeah. me following her career from the very be not the very beginning, but when she ran in 2019, how awful she did, and the worst the worst VP in history in terms of approval ratings, to the general public, mm -hmm. the way this goes down. Go ahead and play this. To the rallies, 
she said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. And the people that do go, she's bussing them in and paying them to be there. And then showing them See, in a different light. Look at that. Look, look how so, relaxed she looks. Just, just just, body language and facial expression. She's smiling at him. It's almost like, oh, this poor child. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Like, it's a lot of like, oh, oh. bless his heart. The, the, she just looks like she controlled this entire thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. She can't talk about that. People don't like my that. rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. That's because people want to take their country back. Our country is being lost. We're a failing nation. And it happened three and a half years ago. And what, what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. As far as rallies are concerned as far as the reason they go is they like what i say they want to bring our country back they want to make america great again it's a very simple phrase make america great again she's destroying this country and if she becomes Look at her face, bro. this country doesn't have a chance she, of like, success this is this was awful to watch live not only success we'll end up being venezuela on steroids that's a perfect example in <sighs> do we want to unpack that or just keep no no let's unpack it i'm just letting you know that yeah anymore. i mean Dude, she set the trap for him. He walked right into it, and that's why she's smiling and laughing. At yes, him. I think she's shocked that it worked. Yes, here's <laughs> here's the deal. Outside of policy, yeah, outside of any of this, you could clearly tell who prepared. Yes, you could clearly tell who prepared. You could clearly tell who was there. She had the zingers. She had the trap set. She had the body language. She looks cool. She looks collected. She was she was on her A game. Yeah, less less said. Trump sounded like a bot. Because he wasn't really prepared, and he's just yeah. repeating all the things. Like he was speaking like it's a rally, and she was yes. speaking like it was a debate. Mm -hmm. Now, does this sway the election? I don't know. We'll, we'll see how the, the polls come out. Not that the polls are, are even right, but goodness gracious, he went right for it because she says she's not. He's not going to talk about you. Mm -hmm. So what does she? So what does he do? He starts defending his rallies. We have the big, the biggest rallies. It's mm -hmm. the biggest rallies. Yep. The most amount of people. They're perfect rallies. No one goes to his rallies. And then he jumps out the window, which we're going to talk about the eating the dogs and the cats thing in a little bit, but completely uh, just just sets the trap and and he falls for it. And then he keeps speaking in like general generalities, like vagueness of like this country is falling apart. This country, it, we're going to be like Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that like if you go too extreme, no one believes you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you can't be like we're going to be like Venezuela. You have to be like under Kamala, we're going to be like Canada. We're going to be like the UK. Like you have to like pull it to somebody yes. that is still doing well, but is having a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he keeps speaking in these like intensities that aren't believable mm -hmm. and then is super vague. So like he never, as even I'm sure as we'll see more, like he never actually starts to nail in like real things that people care about, which right. is kind of her point too. Right. And she, she does that the things that people care about. She talks, mm -hmm. she starts to talk about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of okay. Let's play this next clip. She was big on defund the police in Minnesota. She went out. Wait a minute. I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? That, like that, that. That's just not. That's just not a good look. That's just not a good look. And what's that? What's that in reference to? She cut him off. But why she says? Does it? Why she she said, says, does that, that she said that. She said that at the DNC debate. Oh. Or, or no. She, did she. I think she said that to Mike Pence. Gotcha. She she said that before. Excuse me, I'm talking, right? Oh, okay. So you can't boss babe the boss babe. Yeah. You you can't do that. It, it doesn't work for him. Yeah. Go ahead. She went out. She went out. He just Minnesota. looks grumpy. You know, there are most... He just looks grumpy. Sad day. Now, he does have a great zinger at the end of the debate. But the issue is, I don't know if anyone made it to the end of the debate. Where at the end of the debate, he goes, well, why didn't she do any of this stuff for the last three and a half years? She keeps talking about yes. all this stuff she wants to do. What have they been doing for the last three and a half years? Why hasn't, haven't they done it? How about she goes back to Washington and actually does the stuff she wants to do? And I was like, ooh. So this, this was a great moment for him. Go ahead. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to 
create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? She should leave right now, go down to that beautiful White House, go to the Capitol, get everyone together and do the things you want to do, but you haven't done it and you won't do it because you believe in things that the American people don't believe in. You believe in things like we're not going to frack, we're not going to take fossil fuel, we're not going to do things that are going to make this country strong, whether you like it or not. Germany tried that, and within one year, they were back to building normal energy plants. We're not ready for it. We can't sacrifice our country for the sake of bad vision. But I just ask one simple question. Why didn't she do it? We're a failing nation. We're a nation that's in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the world. All over the world, they're laughing. I know the leaders very well. They're coming <laughs> to see me. They call me. We're laughed okay. at. All so I think that was a good moment for him at the end. Yeah. Now, she did lie a lot. Out the rip, she comes out talking about Project 2025. Yep. Okay. Again, we've we've talked about Project 2025. Project 25 is about is was put together by the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation is not connected to Trump. Yep. How do I know this? Because we have the Lino uh, the Lino Squire, Squires yep. on the channel. He's also been on Breaking Points. He is a he is a black conservative who works for the Heritage Foundation. He's an author, so on and so forth. That is a separate thing outside of anything Trump is related to. So Project 2025 is absolutely not his. And if you're concerned about Project 25, go actually read it. Yeah, I'll go go actually read it and be like. There might be some stuff you disagree with, but it's not this like the country is going to collapse because of Project 2025. So yep. she lies about that. She lies about his position. Mm, yeah. Which I disagree with him being muddy and unclear about it. I disagree with his seemingly flip flopping about it. Uh, he's he, he's he wants to get rid of the six week ban, but he doesn't want to get rid of the six week ban. And get rid of, right now, in a moment, we're going to talk about. The moderators and if they actually how much of a role they played into the situation, how would it would how would it look, right? Here is what I would have said. This is what I was saying. One, I would have prepared. Yeah. Okay. That's mildly important. Two, policy wise, here's the easiest policy arguments. Catch and release in America versus catch and release in Mexico. Now we're talking substance and policies. Yep. Under her administration, as the person that was put over the border, on day one, you told people that it was okay who came over legally to catch, to, to, if they got caught, they were released in America. Mm -hmm. Before, when I was president, we would catch people and release them into Mexico, make them wait in Mexico. Yep. Easiest policy argument that he actually has the upper hand in. Mm -hmm. He did not communicate that clearly. He did not draw that down he just kept talking about how bad the border is but you didn't actually explain to us why is it bad especially since they both make these crazy claims mm -hmm. you, you, the border is awful under this administration and then she goes well i was a real border pos prosecutor yes. and yes. i actually prosecuted we try to get fifteen thousand people uh more agents to the border yeah but yeah. that right there like like it wasn't like he wasn't clear-headed to actually make the case here's another argument she doesn't believe in anything she doesn't. He had one moment where he said, she keeps copying my policies. I'm going to send her a MAGA hat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what he should have said is she has no policies. She yeah. doesn't believe in anything. She's a political chameleon and she's copying me on X, Y, and Z. She has no backbone. She's just going to say whatever she can to get elected. Mm. What does she really believe? We don't know. Right. So he had actual things he could have said. And he fumbled, bro. Yep. He completely fumbled the entire situation. Sounds which me cooking. goes, which me goes, I go, well, this is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. We yeah. had other alternatives. Could you imagine Vivek? Mm, he would have cooked her. Who has been on Breakfast Club how many times? Pressed by three on one on the Breakfast Club? Yep. Charlemagne, uh, 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 DJ Envy, and I, I forgot the, the lady's name on, on the Breakfast Club. Pressing Vivek, and he's just there smiling, laughing, cracking jokes, just chopping them down. <laughs> he he would have cooked Kamala. He would have. I think Ron DeSantis would have done a better job. Do you think that's a generational thing? Like, like he, they're more aware that people actually want to hear substance, and and so Trump is kind of out, kind of just playing. I think Trump can't separate a rally from a debate. Mm. I think he's there's so much hubris there. There's so much. I'm the better guy for the job. And I think he believes that. Yeah. I think he really believes that about mm. himself. 
And I would say on a policy level, I think he's a better job. (laughs) Here's something where she hit him on that that actually has me concerned. Hey, you want to do a 10% increase on sales tax. No, I want to do tariffs. I want to do a 20% increase on tariffs for for stuff coming over from China. Well, let's get into the weeds on if that's going to impact people who are shipping stuff over from China. Is that going to be passed down to the consumer or is China just going to eat it because they want to keep doing work with us? Yeah. Right? Like there's actual substance and stuff that like they kind of got into. But unfortunately, he just he didn't seem prepared. The only time he talked about details was when he was pressed on them mm-hmm. by Kamala, unfortunately. So like he was never really taking the lead and being like, here's what I stand for. Yes. Here's here's what she doesn't stand for. Here's what I stand for. Instead, yes. it, it was always like some crazy big claim. And then, oh, I'll get into the detail on it only if she presses me on it. Right. So he's always just responding. He's just yes. playing catch up with her he's, the entire time. He's playing time. defense the entire time. Yes. And, and, and in a debate, she controlled the frame. She looked relaxed. She was she's laughing at him. She's up there having a good time. He looks like he does not want to be there. Yeah. And, and mind you. The whole, the whole time, I can see straight through it. She's a, she's a, she's a shark, bro. Like, it's just one of those where it's like, I know, I know everything she's saying is insane. Like, from lack of policy to attacking Trump on things that just aren't true, but only Trump got called out for yes. things that weren't true. Yeah. And then, uh, but I know that the average viewer is just going to be like, boom, roasted. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And be sure to check out this video that YouTube is recommending just for you. Let me know if they nailed it. All right? I'll see you over there. Peace.